All right, so now we're gonna look at short-term stress and long-term stress and compare the two based off of their physiological changes, right? So another way of writing short-term is acute, another way of writing long-term is chronic stress, right? And so what causes these, these problems? What causes these problems, right? So any kind of stress response, any kind of trauma, emotional, whether it's emotional, mental, physical, it creates this change in the actual physiology of your body by changing a lot of hormone concentrations, right? So certain hormones are released during stress responses, which activate physiological pathways, right? When we think about short term versus long term, we're comparing the different regions of the adrenal glands, right? So adrenal glands are basically the beanies of your of your kidneys, and their main function is to secrete certain kind of endocrine hormones, right? You have two different sets. You have the catecholamines, which are secreted from the medulla, and then you have the steroids, the, the steroids that are secreted from the cortex. When you think about short-term stress, short-term stress involves your adrenal medulla. So when I said before, what is the medulla? Inside or outside? This is the outside, right? And the adrenal medulla is responsible for the secretion of the catecholamines. So we have the catecholamines. So what are catecholamines? You're like, well, what is that? That doesn't make sense. I've never heard that word before. Catecholamines examples are these amino acid-derived hormones, for example, epinephrine, norepinephrine, acetylcholine. So epinephrine, norepinephrine, and acetylcholine. And their main function, when secreted during a short-term stress response, is changing the physiology of the body into a sympathetic response. So when we think about sympathetic response, what are we thinking about? What is the physiological changes? You have increased heart rate. You have increased blood pressure. What else happens? What else happens? You have increased bronchodilation. Right, your lungs become open. You have vasoconstriction and dilation of different parts of your body. So increase the vasoconstriction, where? Where does it constrict? So it constricts in the digestive system and all the blood moves into the, the skeletal system. So in the digestive, and then you have, for example, the vasoconstriction, right? So vasodilation in the skeletal system, right? Another happen you have increase your pupils become bigger, right? So this all of these happen due to these different hormones that are secreted from the adre adrenal medulla, right? And what triggers this? So it's a sympathetic activity. So it's generated from these preganglionic neurons, right? So these pre-green ganglionic sympathetic fibers that are basically coming in from the central nervous system. So you have the um, sympath the preganglionic sympathetic fibers or neurons, you can call them, doesn't matter, that come in and generate this response, right? So during short-term stress. Long-term stress is different now, right? So this has been happening consistently, consistently. So what happens now in your hypothalamus, your hypothalamus then begins to trigger certain releases of hormones of your adrenal cortex. So long-term or chronic stress involves the adrenal cortex. And so what's in our cortex, majority of the cases that we've seen before? Well, Involving with stress, we can talk about the mineral corticoids, the glucocorticoids, and the gonadocorticoids. Specifically here, two hormones are released here. We have the glucocorticoid. So what is the glucocorticoid? What's an example of that? Do you remember? It's an example of a glucocorticoid. Uh, cortisol. And what does cortisol do? What is cortisol's main function? If we were to write it here. Um, increase, so it's an anti-inflammatory, so it decreases inflammation. What else does it do? It also is also an immunosuppressant. That's why whenever, whenever your body becomes very stressed out, you, you have this instance of getting susceptibility to these secondary infections like cold or flu, 
right? What else does it do? It also increases blood sugar, right? It's a glucocorticoid, right? So it increases blood sugar, right? Because the whole purpose of it, when you go into a stress response, you're trying to, trying to protect the most important organ in your body. What's the most important organ in your body? I know what you're thinking, you're gonna, say, you're gonna say, well, that's a philosophical question, it all really depends on what you're talking about. But the most important organ in your body is your brain. That creates all the activity throughout your systems, right? And one of the big metabolites of the brain is glucose, right? It also causes, for example, increased bone degeneration, right? That's why they always say, you know, whenever you're, those athletes that want to get these bone injections, these, epi, these cortisone shots to bring this anti-inflammatory. They don't recommend it more than once a year because you don't want to have the deterioration of this connective tissue. All right, so you have glucocorticoids that are being released. You have also another hormone that's released. What is that hormone? Is a mineral corticoid. So mineral corticoid, what's an example of that if you remember? What's an example? of that. Aldosterone, right? So aldosterone is a mineral corticoid. What does that mean? It involves with the regulation of your minerals, your salt and your potassium. So what does that mean? Well, aldosterone, its main function is increase sodium reabsorption, right? So bringing the sodium back into the blood. And then it also increases potassium secretion. So it gets potassium out of your blood. So when you have high levels of potassium, excuse me, we have high levels of sodium in your body, that's called hypernatremia. When you have low levels of potassium in your body, it's called hypokalemia, right? And these changes in osmolarity leads to the increased absorption of fluids, right? So you have increase of fluids, right? Now this increases your blood volume. Your blood volume goes up. You have an excessive level of high blood pressure, right? You have an increased heart rate. This can lead to different dilations in your, in your body, right? And so the difference really is between chronic and long-term stress is what hormones usually are being secreted. So during short-term stress, as we said before here, you have the catecholamines from the adrenal medulla that's really effective versus long-term stress affects mainly the cortex secreting these glucocorticoids and these mineral corticoids.